you wonder why people do it, don't you? Give up so much to get a little bit of character, that is. People may buy a little villa in France, dilapidated walls, no windows, hardly doors. And the same is true for French cars. Not many here in the UK, at least the old ones, like this Renault 20 TX. It's a little bit rough around the edges, let's say, but it might be full of character. Now, of course, this was the replacement to the 16, so it's got that hatchback shape, a bit pioneering, and there's pioneering spirit in the rear suspension too, which we'll get onto when we drive. But it's all clothed in that very conservative Renault clothing. This is the TX, so it gets fancy alloy wheels and stiffer springs, which we'll also go into. It's very brown, or at least it was once, um, and inside, it's quite classically French too. And it's quite a big car inside. Of course, it was bigger than the Renault 16. And together with the Renault 30, this was the top of Renault's range. This is a later car, so it has the more modern looking dash, which is reasonably solid. The rest of the quality of the interior is okay. Vinyl and the doors is all right. And the leather is very soft, big wide seats, not quite as tall as you might want, but generally quite comfortable and as cushy armrests. Yeah, overall, it's a reasonably nice place to be. And of course, there's space in the back too, because it's that hatchback shape. Of course, the things to look forward to in all French cars is how softly they ride. So let's find out. So we've got a front wheel drive. 2.2 litre Renault 20 here. It's the biggest of the four cylinders. Of course, they did a V6 in their Renault 30, but here we've got 115 brake horsepower and a big slog of 133 foot-pounds of torque, and that's at 3,000 RPM. This one's got the three-speed automatic, which is smooth enough, but of course, you're gonna get uh, spaces in between your gears, so thank God for the torque. And I'll tell you what, it does just go down the road fairly easily. As you can hear, it's not the smoothest engine in the world, but it does kick down. And it's got a reasonable turn of pace. Not 60, apparently 10.5 seconds, and it'll do well over 100 miles an hour, apparently. And it's quite agile. Steering is just over three turns lock to lock. It's rack and pinion too. And actually, as much as it kind of feels a little bit wallowy over some of the bumps, which gives it a good ride, it's surprisingly direct in the corners. It can actually probably turn it in. Now, this being the TX, which gives it that bigger engine, it's also got stiffer springs and wider tires. Um, it's got the Michelin TRXs, 190 mil uh, wide and I think what 60 profile this one has slightly different tires at the rear and um, so it's probably gonna upset things but it goes down the road quite well it's a little bit noisy though the refinement is it feels like a class or two below the Renault 25 which of course succeeded this what only a few years later Right, let's see, when you really go for it. That's foot on the floor now, 50. It's just passing 4,000. It's gaining a bit of a coarse edge. But you can feel it, it comes on cam a bit, and it's just changed up at 60. It doesn't feel fast, but the rest of the chassis is there to catch up. It's got decent brakes. Nine and a half inch discs at the front, I think, and nine uh, inch rear drums. Dual circuits though, and obviously hydraulically assisted. Now as we get over some of these uh, bumpier roads, as we're coming up over the hills here, it's starting to lose track a little bit of the damping, but most of the time it feels very composed. You've got to remember, it only weighs 1,300 kilos. Of course, it's, what, 63% of oh, that is on the front axle, unsurprisingly, and then you can eventually 
pushed it to understeer. Here we go. This is some tight corners. The seats are more supportive than I thought, actually. Right, let's power out. <laughs> A bit of body roll, but not too much. Foot down. There you go. Oh dear. So what about that <laughs> dilapidated charm of the old French car? Well, you can drive like a mad Frenchman and it holds up. If you just want to pootle along, sit in your excessively soft but strangely misshapen chair and just, I don't know what, smoke a cigarette or do whatever a French car owner does, it kind of suits that role. It's rough and ready, let's say, and it feels almost like it would be this comfortable to drive, whether it's on a bumpy B road or a, a farm track. They are very difficult to find, though. If you do want one, they are extremely rare. But then that's whole kind of part of it, isn't it? It's something a bit different, a bit, well, it's certainly really almost becoming unique. There are that few of them. And it's a bit of Renault history, a bit of French history. And amongst the Peugeots and Citroëns, yeah, Renault 20 is a bit cool. It's certainly no um, sports car, but it's a bit of a vintage cruiser. Yeah, why not? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and obviously if you want to have a look at our Renault 25 road test, it's quite a good car, that. Click on the uh, link which I'll put somewhere. In the meantime, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you soon. Kick down. Oh. <laughs> the Renault 20. What a machine.